بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسألون به والأحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتعي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فإن أسق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Last week we talk a bit about the hadith of Aisha رضي الله عنها She says قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الخراج بالضمان the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Al-Kharaju Bid-Daman The hadith is authentic insha'Allah and Al-Amir al-Sanani yaqool Al-Hadith akhrajahu al-Shafi'i Imam al-Shafi'i also collected the hadith of Ashabu al-Sunan bitulihi and the rest of the Ashabu al-Sunan and they mentioned the full version of the hadith قال وهو أن رجلا اشترى غلاما في زمن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان عنده ما شاء الله هذا was a case من the remaining part of the hadith which is not mentioned by ابن حجر ابن حجر in the in the in the in the متن the text you get it the main text of the the بلوغ المرام is what Imam Shafi completed which is supposed to be the cause I mean the reason why the sabab the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the hadith قالوه أن رجلا اشترى غلاما the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said الخراج بالضمان that was the case that took place during the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the man bought a slave في زمن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وكان عنده ما شاء الله and the slave was with him I mean, quite a period of time. I mean, the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. ثم رده من عيب وجده And then he returned it back to the seller because of a deficiency he discovered. So there was a deficiency he discovered so he returned it back to the seller. This is, they call it خيار العيب. If you buy something and you find deficiency in it, you do have a right Islamically to take it back, no matter how much it stays with you. It wasn't his right for him to take your money for that deficiency. He has to explain clearly what exactly the, the product is. So if he hides something and then you discover that thing afterwards, you do have a right to bring it back. He tells you, Allah, I do not know about this, that's up to him. Because you do not buy the deficiency. So that's khayar lahim. So these days what you, you see written by the, the businessman that as long as you buy something, you cannot return it back. It cannot be refunded. Uh, that's a joke Islamically. It is useless. Islam does not justify oppression. A person cannot cheat you and say, yes, I already wrote that you're going to take it back. It doesn't go like that. That's useless. He has to take it back Islamically and give you back your money or less, give you back the difference. How is the difference? We just look at the, the correct one without deficiency. How much is it? The correct one is 100 ringgit, for example. But the deficiency is 50 ringgit. That's when he has to return back to you 50 ringgit. Or else he has to take it back and give you back your money. You go and look for somebody else to buy from him. So the man bought the slave and then he found a deficiency in it. So he took it back to the owner, the first owner. فَقَالَ الْمَقْضِيُّ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ وَقَدِسْتْ ثُمَّ رَدَّهُ مِنْ عَيْبٍ فَقَضَى رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِرَدِّهِ بِالْعَيْبٍ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, you do have a right to take it back and take your money. الْمَقْضِيُّ عَلَيْهِ meaning the seller. 
the one that the judgment was done upon him, I mean against him, right? So he said, Ya Rasulullah, Qad istamalahu. Ya Rasulullah, he used it. And the slave works for him. The slave do this, this, and that. He benefited from the slave. فَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, الْخَرَاجُ بِالضَّمَانِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, الْخَرَاجُ بِالضَّمَانِ That's the reason why the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the thing. Yeah, so it's good sometimes to know, I mean, not sometimes, all the time, to know the cause of the hadith. You will understand the hadith properly. Right? He says, Ya Rasulullah, he uses my slave. He used my slave. But now I have to take the slave and return back the money. The Prophet said, Al Kharaju bin Dhamar. What does that mean? Who is responsible if there is a loss? If the if the slave was missing, who pays for that? The buyer. And then the same thing, since he's the one who is responsible to take care of him, if there is any gain or profit, he should take the profit also. So he deserved that profit, that benefit, because he's responsible of the slave. Al Kharaju bin Dhamar. Wal Kharaju hu al Ghalat wal Kira or al Kura. Wa ma'anahu. Al Kharaj. What is Kharaj? Kharaj is the Ghalla. Ghalla is the profit, the gain. Right. Wa ma'anahu anna al Mabiya ida kana lahu dakhlun wa Ghalatun fa inna malika al Raqabati aladhi huwa daminu laha yamliku Kharajha li Dhamani asliha. It's very good. Imam al Sanani says. The meaning of al kharaj bi daman is an al mabiya, the soul item. You get it, the item that you sold. Uh, he says an al mabiya ida kan lahu dakhal. Whenever you sell an item that brings a revenue, generate an income, right? Get it? For in the malik al raqaba, the one who owns it during the the, what? the the gain, the profit earning, right? The one who owns it. Okay, when I buy the car from you, right? Or I bought a house from you. Or we use the slave there. I bought a slave from you. After the transaction is finalized, who owns the slave? I own it. Now, the transfer of ownership was done. When I transfer the ownership of my money to the seller, I also get the transfer of the, the slave to me. Then I own the slave. So he says here, slaves usually they don't just stay at home at home and sleep. They work, they bring money, right? Whatsoever they get belongs to who? Belongs to the one who owns them. The moment they are getting, they are generating the, the, the revenue. I think that's fair because he's the owner at that moment. He's responsible. If they committed a crime, he's responsible. If they do something wrong, he's responsible. Whatever happened, he's responsible. If they are missing, he's responsible. So he says, the owner of the slave, Malikul Raqaba, the one who owns the slave, or the one who owns the, the sold item. You get it? The moment the income is generated by that item, he will be the one who owns the income also. That's the meaning of Al Kharaj bin Daman. I think it's very clear, right? Okay. Al Kharaj bin Daman. Qala, fa inna malik al raqaba aladhi huwa da min allah yamliku kharajaha li damani asliha. Because he's the one who is responsible to take care of it, and he's the one who is responsible to uh, look after it. So at the same, in the same time, as long as he is the one who owns it, then he owns the profit completely. قال فإذا ابتاع رجل أرضا فاستعملها أو ماشية فنتجها أو دابة فركبها أو عبدا فاستخدمه أو وج ثم وجد به عيبا فله أن يرده ولا شيء عليه. الأمير السنعاني said as such if a person buys a land a piece of land فاستعملها and then he uses the land أو ماشية فنتجها or he bought uh, a flock or sheep, get it? Uh, and he keeps it with him until they get babies. Nitaj al Mashia means the babies, the young ones, the kids. Or he bought a horse and then he, he rides it. 
Our abd then first him, or he bought a slave, he uses the slave after he bought it. ثم وجد به عيبا أن ذن هي فهو الديفيشنسي نت فلا هو أن يرده ولا شيء عليه. He do have he does have a right he do have a right to take it back to the owner the first owner right and take his money ولا شيء عليه and he does not need to pay anything. في من تفع به he doesn't need to pay for that benefit he gained and generated from. لأنها لو تلفت ما بين مدة الفسخ والعقد لكانت في ضمان المشتري because if we just to assume you get it a loss between the time he bought it and the time he returned it back to him if we are to assume a loss who is responsible the buyer you get it and in this case in the same case since he is responsible we do not hold him accountability of uh, what he could pay in the missing uh, property and the loss and also at the same time we then share with him the profit it doesn't go قال ولا شيء عليه لأنها لو تلفت ما بين مدة الفسخ والعقد لكانت في ضمان المشتري فواجب أن يكون الخراج له that's what we said وقد اختلف العلماء في المسألة على ثلاثة أقوال the scholars uh, discuss the issue and they argue and they differ amongst themselves into three groups. They have three opinions amongst them, right? قال الأول للشافعي أن الخراج بالضمان على ما قررناه في معنى الحديث. The first opinion is the opinion of Imam al-Shafi'i. What is the opinion of Imam al-Shafi'i? أن الخراج بالضمان. Just exactly in the way the hadith says. The hadith says what? الخراج بالضمان. What is that? It means you are responsible. If that is again, you should be also sharing them in the profit. قال كما قر على ما قرناه في معنى الحديث وما وجد من الفوائد الأصلية والفرعية فهو للمشتري ويرد المبيع ما لم يكن ناقصا عما أخذه. Imam Shafi says, وما وجد من الفوائد. Whatsoever faida he gets. Min al fawaid al asliya. I mean, the, those fawaid that are asliya. The part of it, inshallah, the translation of fawaid al asliya and fara'iya will come in in the future, inshallah. He get it the fawaid al asliya. Fawaid, those benefits that are connected to the roots, part of it. Aw fara'iya, all those fawaid which are considered to be branches, they are not part of it really. He would tell us, inshallah, what kind of fawaid. I call Fawaid al Asliya and Fawaid al Fari. Fahuwa lil Mushtari. Who get it? The Mushtari will get it. It means any fa'ida that is generated from that item which he bought, he bought, it will be his. Right. Wa yurud al Mabi'a. And he do, he, do, uh, he do have a right to, he does have a right to, uh, what he call, to take it back to the seller and get back his money. Ma lam yakun naqisan amma akhadahu. As long as it doesn't go below the status uh, in which he took it from the, the seller. Okay. You took it from the seller and it was okay. As a cow is very full. It's very full. The meat is nice. I mean when you see it, mashallah. But then when you take it back it was hazil, very thin because you don't give it food. So here there is a deficiency. If you take it back to him he do not buy it like this. At least return it back to its original format and then take it back to it. That's justice. Whatever is generated is yours. And if there is any deficiency, Al-Kharaj bil Daman, al gulmu bil gurm That's me. You should be responsible of the deficiency also. When you return it back, you return back the, the payment for the deficiency. Just like the case of the Musarra, if you remember the, the animal that you, you bought, but somebody gave, gave it some food and it has a lot of milk, but there is no milk. The Prophet said, when you take the milk, this milk belongs to the seller. But you benefited from that. So you return it back with sa min min tamur. One sa of tamur as a compensation for that deficiency that you happen to be the cause. That's the opinion of Muhammad Shafi. It's exactly like the hadith of the Prophet. Al Qawl al Thani, lil hadawiyyati wa ba'd al ulama. أنه يفرق بين الفائدة الأصلية والفرعية 
They said there is a difference between fawaid al asliya and the fawaid al fariya. Right? They said if it is fawaid al asliya, it is the right of the fariya. And the asliya is the right of the fariya. The seller, I'm sorry, the buyer deserves the fawaid al fariya. So exercise patience. Inshallah, in the next opinion, they will explain what exactly it means. Fawaid al fariya goes to the mushtari, which is the buyer. As for the fawaid al-asliya, they don't go to the mushtari, but they will remain as amana in the hand of the, uh, what do you call, in the hand of the mushtari. Fawaid al-fari'iyya, mushtari deserves them. Fawaid al-fari'iyya, uh, mushtari deserves them. Fawaid al-asliya, mushtari does not deserve them. They belong to the seller. You get it? Mushtari is the buyer. They belong to the seller. But now since I cannot just separate the root from the branches, they have to stay for a while until they get ready to be, to be taken. You get it? Then there will be a mana on the shoulder of who? The mushtari, the buyer. He will keep on taking care of them until the time they are ready to be taken, ready to be collected, then he returns them back to, to the seller. That's this opinion. قَالَ فَيَسْتَحِقُّ الْمُشْتَرِي الْفَرْعِيَّةَ وَأَمَّا الْأَصْلِيَّةُ فَتَسِيرُ أَمَانَةً فِي يَدِهِ فَإِذَا رَدَّ الْمُشْتَرِيَّ الْمُشْتَرِي فَإِذَا رَدَّ الْمُشْتَرِي الْمَبِيعَ بِالْحُكْمِ وَجَبَ الرَّدُّ وَيَضْمَنُ التَّالِفَ وَإِنْ كَانَ بِالتَّرَاضِي لَمْ يَرُدَّهَا قال فَإِذَا رَدَّ الْمُشْتَرِي الْمَبِيعَ بِالْحُكْمِ وَجَبَ الرَّدُّ وَيَضْمَنُ التَّالِفَ So if he is to happen if 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 he is to return back Let's say he says there is a deficiency and he reports the case to the court and they decide that he has to retake it back. Okay, he takes it back. If there is any deficiency, he has to pay for that. Is that clear? He has to pay for that. If there is deficiency in what case? Is it in the asliya or fariya? Asliya, because fariya is his, right? But when there is a deficiency in the fariya, he has to take it. Uh, I mean, he has to pay, pay for that. Do you get an idea? If that deficiency take place, not with the consent of the seller, but if the seller agrees for him to use, and the deficiency happened, then he doesn't need to take it back to him. That's قول الثاني. الثالث للحرفية لوزا أحناف. They said أن المشتري يستحق الفوائد الفرعية كالكراء أو الكراء والفوائد الأصلية كالثمار. فَإِنْ كَانَتْ بَاقِيَةً رَدَّهَا مَا الْأَصْلِي So now they tell you which is Fa'id al-Asliya, which is Fa'id al-Fariya. Al-Ahnaf says, he deserves, he got it, and al-Mushtari yastihqu al-Fa'id al-Fariya. All the Fa'id al-Fariya, he deserves them. Like what? He said like the Kira. The Kira, this is the, the, what do you call the, the, the rental payment. You get the payment when you rent a house, you pay. This rental is not part of the house. Is that, I think it's clear, right? It's not part of the house. It's separated from the house. It's something that is generated through the usage of the house, but it's not part of it. They don't look alike. Right? That's why they call it fara'iyya. They are not part of it. But they're generated from it, but they're not part of it. As for the asliya, like what? Like the thamar, the fruit on the tree. The fruit, are they, are they part of the tree? Yes, for sure. They are part of the tree. If the fruit is still in existence, in a case he does not use them, then he returns them back to the owner, to the seller, together with the roots. Get it? He returned them back together with, with the root. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ تَالِفَةً إِمْتَنَعَ الرَّدُّ وَاسْتَحَقَّ الْأَرُشِ But if he destroy them, then he has no right to return it back. You see the difference between the first and the second opinion, uh, the, the, third, uh, the second and the third opinion, right? Uh, the third opinion is saying, the second opinion says, فَرْعِيَّ belongs to the mushtari, that's the buyer. Asliya belongs to who? To the seller. He has to return it back. Get it? So, but if we're talking about the fruit, we cannot just tell him, come and just cut them off now. Okay, he can't, right? Because if we ask him to do, 
they might not be ready to be, to be taken at that moment, right? So what shall we do? We said it will remain under your custody as amana. That's the second opinion. The third opinion says the fara'iyah, like the first one, belongs to the mushtari. For the asliya, he says it belongs to the seller. If the thing still exists, he returns it back altogether. The fruit and the, the what you call the roots, the tree itself. But if he already used the, the fruits, in this case, he cannot return back the, what you call the, the trees, because he already caused deficiency in it. So what, what must he do here? So we just ask him, how much deficiency, how much deficiency you encounter? I mean, you bought it 100,000 ringgit. If you are to buy it with the deficiency, how much would you buy it? But we don't ask him, actually, we go to the market. We ask the market, with the deficiency, something like that, how much does it cost? They said it is 80,000 ringgit. That means he has to return back, the seller has to return back how much? 20,000 ringgit to the, to the buyer. That's the arsh. He cannot return the, the, the thing back and cancel the transaction. But what he deserves is what? To be paid the cost for the deficiency. That's it. Is that clear? I guess this is the last opinion, then you get rest, inshallah. That's the opinion of Imam Malik. That's the opinion of Imam Malik. That is a difference between Fawaid al Asliya and the Fawaid al Fariya. They give example according to them. Al-Fawaid al-Asliya ka-Sufi wa-Sha'ari Just like the Suf, this is the, 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 the what you call the, the hair of the sheep. That's Suf. Al-Sha'ar, this is the hair of the, 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 the goat and cow. Just a small, small, tiny one. The, sh the sheep one, you know, is, is a lot, right? Call it Suf. Okay, this one they call it Al-Asliya al al because they're part of the animal, right? فَيَسْتَحِقُّ الْمُشْتَرِي وَالْوَلَدَ بِرَدِّهِ مَا أُمِّهِ قَالَ فَيَسْتَحِقُّ الْمُشْتَرِي وَالْوَلَدَ بِرَدِّهِ مَا أُمِّهِ وَكَذَلِكَ الْوَلَدِ بِرَدِّهِ مَا أُمِّهِ فَيَسْتَحِقُّهُ الْمُشْتَرِي So this الفرعية كالصوفي والشعر يستحقه المشتري وَالْوَلَدَ بِرَدِّهِ مَا أُمِّهِ وَهَذَا مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ مُتَّسِلَةٌ بِالْمَبِيءِ وَقْتَ الرَّدِّ فَإِنْ كَانَتْ مُتَّسِلَةٌ وَجَبَ الرَّدِّ يعني this sentence uh, complicated the situation الله مستعب قال يستحقه المشتري so this فرعية which is the suf and the, the شعر it belongs to the مشتري just like the, the, the first uh, uh, the second and the third opinion والولد I guess he meant وَيَسْتَحِقُّ الْوَلَدَ بِرَدِّهِ مَا أُمِّهِ اللهم سأل This one, just leave it inshallah Next week I will check it for you بإذن الله تعالى قال وهذا ما لم تكن متصلة بالمبيع وقت الرد He said all this is based on the condition that it doesn't get connected to the to the Mabi, Mabi is a sold uh, item, at the time he is returning back to, uh, to the Mushtari. فَإِنْ كَانَتْ مُتَّصِلَةً وَجَبَ الرَّدُّ لَهَا إِجْمَعًا So if it is connected to it, I mean something which is attached to the Mabi, the thing you bought, then وَجَبَ الرَّدُّ إِجْمَعًا You have to return them back completely. So what do, what do you return? You return them back with, with the, what do you call, with the root, both of them. But if it is not mutasila, I mean not part of it, not connected to it, like the, the sha'ar, sha'ar is connected to the, what you call the sold item, the sheep, right? Uh, so what must you do? You deserve it, because this is, uh, no, I'm sorry, al-asliya fa istihikuhu al-mushtari, kasuf wa sha'ar istihikuhu al-mushtari wal walada biraddihi ma ummihi wa hadha ma lam takum mutasilatan bil mabi. Okay, I think I got it now. Uh, if if you you bought the the sheep, the sheep or the goat, and you remove the uh, what do you call the the, the hair from it, uh, in this case, if you're going to return it back, 
you return it back to the, uh, I'm sorry, the seller. But if you already cut it, it is separated. That's why he says, Malam to kumutasilatan bil mabi waktar raddi. As long as it is not connected to the, the sold item, the moment you are returning the back, uh, taking it back to, to him. If it is connected to it, let's say the souf, you get it? The, 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 the hair, it is still on the skin of the, the animal. Uh, so in this case, the seller deserves it. Even, let's say, it grows in your hand. Let's say the souf, he cut it, you get it? When uh, he already sold it, when the, when the souf is not there. But when it comes to you, it grows the souf with you. And then you cut it. Who deserves that? You deserve it as a mushtari. Do you get it? As long as you remove it. But if it is still on the skin, he says you have to return it back to, to the seller. You get it? The son, uh, the son of a slave. Let's say you're going to sell the slave who is having the, uh, the what do you call the, the fetus in the womb. As long as the child is mutasil biha, lam yakum mufasil, alladhi yastahikuhu huwa al-mushtari. I'm sorry, alladhi yastahikuhu huwa al-ba'ya, who was, uh, is the seller. So I bought from you a slave. And this slave is a pregnant. Do you get it? And I got the child, I got the child after I bought it. Who deserves it? According to this opinion, I deserve it because it happens during my custody. Get it? But when I got the child, when, when let's say I'm taking it back to you before the delivery, who deserves the, the baby? He deserves it. Right? Even if the pregnancy took place during the, the period when the, the ownership of the slave is on my hand. It's clear? So I will repeat. What they meant is the diff to differentiate between Asliya and Fariya, just like the second and the third opinion. They said just like the Suf, فَيَسْتَحِقُّهُ الْمُشْتَرِي وَالْوَلَدَ بِرَدِّهِ مَعْ أُمِّهِ وَهَذَا مَا لَمْ تَكُمْ مُتَّسِلَةً بِالْمَبِئِ وَقْتَ الرَّدِّ فَإِنْ كَانَتْ مُتَّسِلَةً وَجَبَ الرَّدُّ لَهَا إِجْمَعًا So if it is connected, then he has to take both back to the, to the what do you call, to the seller. Inshallah. هَذَا مَا قَالَهُ الْمَذْكُورُ he said, this is what is said by all of the scholars. So we have the first opinion, which is according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ precisely. And we have the second opinion, which is for the Hadawiyah, which says, we differentiate between Asliya and Fara'iyah. If it is Fara'iyah, we give it to the Muschari. If it is Asliya, we take it back to the, what you call, to the seller. The Muschari doesn't deserve it at all. We got the third opinion, which is for the Ahnaf, that says, yes, we also differentiate like the second opinion, but they said, uh, the, the mushtari, he deserves the fara'iyah, but for the asliya, if it is still there in existence, then uh, he returned them back. But if he already make use of it, then in this case, he doesn't deserve anything except to take the arsh. What is arsh? This is the difference between the correct and the mistake, right? So we just value it in the market. We see what is the price of the, cor price of the correct one, uh, and then we see the difference between the correct I mean the, the good one and the deficient one. The third one is for the Imam Malik, which says also we differentiate between Fariya and Asliya. They said the Mushtari deserve the, the Fariya as long as it is not still connected to uh, what he called to the, to, the, to the Usul. If it is still connected to the Usul, then uh, he doesn't deserve it. He has to return it back to, to the seller in the way it is. So Al Amir Sarani said, Hada ma al madkuru. This is what is said by all of those uh, whom we mentioned. Opinion of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and, and the rest. ثم قال والحديث ظاهر في ما ذهب إليه الشافعي He said, but if you look at the hadith properly, hadith is very clear to support that which is believed by Imam al-Shafi. So what does that mean? The choice to Al-Amir al-Sanani is what? The opinion of Imam al-Shafi. Why is that? Because the hadith supported that. And that's true. قال والحديث ظاهر في ما ذهب إليه الشافعي وأما إذا وطئ المشتري الأمة ثم وجد بها عيبا فقد اختلف العلماء في ذلك فقالت الهدوية وأهل الرأي What if the مشتري bought a slave and then he have uh, he has sexual intercourse with her you get it he approached the slave sexually halal from Allah سبحانه وتعالى so what will happen now? After he, he had the sex, uh, 
sexual intercourse with her and then he realized the deficiency. Can he return her back? Or he doesn't have the right to do so. Differences of opinion exist concerning the matter. فَقَالَتِ الْهَدَوِيَّ وَأَهْلُ الرَّعِي The Ahlul Ra'i, these are Ahnaf and the Hadawiyya wa Thawri, Sufyan al-Thawri wa Ishaq ibn Rahuya يَمْتَنِعُ الرَّدُّ لِأَنَّ الْوَطْءَ جِنَاءَ لِأَنَّهُ لَا يَحِلُّ وَطْءُ الْأَمَةِ لِأَصْلِ الْمُشْتَرِي وَلَا لِفَصْلِهِ فَقَدْ عَيَّبَهَا بِذَلِكِ These scholars that we mentioned, they said there is no no Rad here after the sex, then he cannot return her back. Do you get it? Because if he is going to return her back, he will look like somebody else's slave, which is approached by him. And there's a crime. Right. And having a sex with a slave, this is a deficiency. Even in the normal circumstances, if somebody marries a woman and he has a relationship with her, she becomes what? A matron, right? And the fuqaha, when they discuss the, 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 the sadaq for, for the, the virgin and the, 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 the matron, they, they differentiate. Even the cultural practice of the people also differentiate between them. If this one get 100,000, this one the virgin one. The other one will get maybe 50 or even less than that. Why is all that? Because somebody has a sexual relationship with her. So it's a deficiency which cannot be healed, right? Because once it's happened even once, khalas, finish. That's why this is mathalib al-zawaj bin yet talaq Somebody to validate a marriage with the intention of a divorce. This is very bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. Because it's a cheat. And also you're gonna put that woman into trouble after she trusted you. You can't say marriage is not forever. Nobody says it's a condition that you have to marry forever. Yeah, we understand. But this woman, she accepts you for what? Based on this, based on the assumption that you will marry her according to everybody else's marriage. People marry to live with the, with the wife. But you will marry in because of what? You just want to satisfy your desire and then leave her. So once that, that sexual relationship happens, khalas. Sometimes in some places she would never get somebody to marry her. It is her whose life? Her life. Which she would never enjoy it when it is to happen to your sister, your mother, I mean, your daughter. You would never accept. Right. But you shouldn't also let it happen to somebody else because of you. So these, these, these scholars, they said, if the deficiency, I mean, if the relationship took place, uh, as long as it happens, then uh, you cannot take it back to the, to the owner. وَمِنْ وَكِيلَ يَرُدُّهَا وَيَرُدُّهَا مَعْهَا مَهْرُ مِثْلِهَا قَالُوا وَيَرْجِعُ يَرْجِعُ عَلَى الْبَعِ بِأَرْشِ الْعَيْبِ So those scholars, they said, cannot be returned. What he does is, he will go back to the seller and ask him to pay the the, the difference or the, the value of the deficiency. That's it. Get it? It's a good opinion. Some scholars said no. He do uh, have a right to take, take her back and then also uh, when he takes her back he has to pay the mahar for her likeness. Mahar means we just look a woman like this. Somebody who carries the same beauty in the same, you get it, the same nature how much the mahar should be culturally, then we pay the owner of the slave this amount of money. Why didn't I use the woman herself? Because she's a slave. Whatever she owns belongs to the master. وَقِيلَ يَرِدُّهَا وَيَرِدُّ مَهْرُ مِثْلِهَا وَمِنْهُ مَنْ فَرَّقَ بَيْنَ الثَّيِّبُ وَالْبِكِرُ Some scholars said, there shall be a difference between the thayyib and bikir. The thayyib is the matron, somebody who married already. And Bikr is somebody who never married at all in her life. وَقَدْ اسْتَوْفَ الْخَطَّابِ فِي كِتَابِهِ مَعَالِمِ السُّنَةِ ذَلِكَ وَنَقَلَهُ الشَّارِهُ وَالْكُلُّ أَقْوَالٌ عَارِيَةٌ عَلِّ الْاسْتِدْلَةِ So Amir al-Sanani said, the one who talks about this issue in detail is 
Al-Khattabi. Khattabi has a very nice commentary on Sunan Abi Dawood. Uh, the recent, what do you call, uh, uh, good, uh, what do you call, publication of uh, Sunan Abi Dawood is attached to this. And I, I remember when we were studying this Sunan Abi Dawood uh, with Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abad in Medina, this is the, the, the Nuskha they, they gave us. And I found it to be one of the best Nuskh uh, for the, what do you call, for Sunan Abi Dawood in terms of printing error typing error and also they attach it to this uh, commentary of Al-Khattabi Mu'afi Ma'alim al-Sunan. So he said he talks about that. But then Amir Sana'ani says, Kulluha aqwalun aliyatun an al He says all of these are just statements of the scholars trying to reach a conclusion. But there is no evidence to support any one of them. وَدَعْوَ عَنِ الْوَطْعَ جِنَايَةً دَعْوَ غَيْرُ صَحِيحَا And also somebody to say that this is a crime when you commit when you have a relationship with a slave that you bought, it's a crime because you, you find the deficiency with how He said this is too far. Because when you bought the slave, who owns the slave? You. Do you have a right Islamically to approach her? Yes. Who legalized that for you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it going to be Janaya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says halal? I mean, very simple logic, right? He said it's, not, it's, it's too far from the correct approach. قالوا التعليل بأنه حرمها به على أصوله وفصوله فكان جناية علي. He said also some scholars said but when he has a relationship with her then she becomes haram upon his usul and his children. His parents cannot have relationship with her. He's, he said all of these things they are they are دعوة علي. تعليل علي. They say what تعليل بمثل هذا علي. What is علي? التعليل is justification. What is علي? Sickness. I mean, this ta'lil is, is sick. Do you get what, what it meant? It means it's too far from the truth, right? قَالَ فَلَمْ يَنْحَصِلِ الْمُشْتَرِي لَهَا فِيهِمَا So what is he trying to say? He's trying to tell you that all of these things, if there is a deficiency, we should go with, with the main concept, right? He do have a right to approach her. What is that? الْخَرَاجُ بِالْضَمَنِ Right? He does have a right to do that. Al Kharaj bin Dawan. That means whatever he does is free of charge. He do, does have a right to take, take the slave back and, and bring his money back or ask him to pay the value of the deficiency. So that's for this hadith. So I will take, inshallah, the next hadith, just uh, the translation of the hadith and the commentary will delay it, inshallah, until next week. Inshallah. Next week I will come early, inshallah. Then we can pay the the price. قال أن عروة البارقي عروة بن جعد البارقي أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أعطاه دينارا ليشتري به أضحية أو شاة فاشترى به شاتين فباع إحداهما بدينار فأتاه بشاة ودينار فدعا له بالبركة وفي بيعها فكان لو اشترى ترابا لا ربح فيه رأوا الخمسة إلا النساء. وقد أخرجه البخاري في ضمن حديث في ضمن حديث ولم يسق لفظه وأورده الترمذي وله له شاهد من حديث حكيم بن حزم. عروة بن جعد البارقي one of the great companions of the Prophet الله عليه وسلم said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم one day أعطاه دينارا he gave him one دينار ليشتري به أضحية in order to buy أضحية for him. أو شاتم أو تبع الشيب فهم فاشترى به شاتين. He bought two sheep instead of one. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم asked him to buy one. He bought two. فدل على الجواز. فباع إحداهما بدينار. So he sold one of them with one dinar. فأتاه بشاتين ودينار. And he came back to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم with a sheep and dinar. What he did, does is, the Prophet ﷺ told him, Urwa, here's my dinar, please get me a, a sheep. I want to do all the hair with it. So Urwa says, Hadir uh, Rasulullah. Labba da'wat al-Nabi ﷺ, he went to the marketplace to buy. You get it? He decided to please the Prophet ﷺ. He bought the sheep, right? With one dinar, 
the one that is given to him by the Prophet So instead of bringing it back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what did he do? He take it. I mean, he went back to the marketplace, and then he sold it with two dinar. Yeah, he bought it with one dinar and then sold it back to the market with two dinar. And then he purchased another, another sheep with one dinar. The prophet wants want how many sheep? One. What was the price? One dinar. And he gave him a dinar. So he bought a di the sheep and he sold it back to somebody, two dinars. And he went back to the market bought another sheep with one dinar. He came back to the Prophet ﷺ with the sheep and his dinar. And said, Ya Rasulullah, هذا شاتك وهذا دينارك. So the Prophet ﷺ said, How? I gave you only one dinar and dinar doesn't deliver, right? Give birth to another dinar. <laughs> How do you get that? He said, No, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happens. He explained to the Prophet ﷺ exactly what he did. قال فدعا له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بالبركة في بيعه. Get it? That's a good thing about pleasing the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So he made him happy. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made dua for him. Dua for what? Since this is business issue, right? Prophet made dua for him to succeed in his business. Look at what he says. And those people who are having a hesitation. You get it? In taking the advice from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa let them hear this, right? قَالَ فَدَعَ لَهُ بِالْبَرَكَةِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him. What happens after that? قَالَ فَكَانَ لَوْ اشْتَرَى تُرَابًا لَرَبِحَ فِيهِ He became a person, they said, not only اشْتَرَى, this one says, لَوْ رَفَعَ تُرَابًا They said in some hadith. If he is to just pick up his hand and say, who will buy? There must be somebody who will come and tell him how much. And they will buy, seriously. He never lost a business. Why is that? Bi barakati dua in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's continuous. You, I mean, apply the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you will never, never regret. You get it? In the way he made the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happy and he got a dua, you also, if you are to make the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam happy, in what sense? Following the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he's uh, tracing his his tracks. You will never lose these in life, Taala. You always succeed, and you will be happy in life. Right? So that's the result. So, inshallah, next uh, week. I'm very sorry to have a very short class, but uh, next week, inshallah, I will uh, go through the commentary, and la'allana, maybe we might have a long class. In Allah Ta'ala, next week we might have a long class. I will come early to pay the, the debt, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalullah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayhi.